right, well, we're gonna get started here. I wanna say greetings to all of my fellow scientists here. I wanna welcome you to the Wisconsin Science Festival online field trip with C Grant. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Joe Withers. I'm from the Wisconsin Science Festival team and we're here with our special guest Titus from C Grant. Uh, we would like you to know how to participate with us here today. Your picture and audio are going to be muted but if you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. As soon as you have a question, go ahead and type it right away and we'll ask your, question, we'll ask your questions as much as we can during the field trip. The field trip will be recorded and as always, we ask that you do this in all activities at the Wisconsin Science Festival with a responsible adult. We would also like to thank all of our sponsors and partners that have helped make the Science Festival possible. You can find out more activities and events during the festival at wisconsinsciencefest.org. With that, we're excited to get started and take it away, Titus. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, all right, welcome everybody uh, to what is obviously my kitchen, but for now we're gonna call this my uh, science lab at home. So um, I am here and I'm going to talk to you today about the burbot. And the burbot is, uh, as a, a, it's a type of fish. And interestingly enough, it is our only freshwater member of the cod family. So uh, cod you might have heard of. It's, uh, if you go to a fish fry, there's probably cod uh, on the menu. And this burbot that we're gonna look at and we're gonna learn about and we're gonna actually cut open and look at the, the internal organs as well is a member of the cod family. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. So my name is Titus Seilheimer. I am a fishery specialist with Wisconsin Sea Grant. Uh, that means that I get to play around with fish all day. That is my job. It's a, a great thing that I get to do. Um, I am uh, talking to you today from Manitowoc, Wisconsin on the shores of Lake Michigan. And I'm actually, you don't want to look at me talk, you want to look at this fish. So I'm going to shift our camera down a bit. There it is. There's the star of the show today. Um, and this is our burbot. Um, this was caught locally uh, by a commercial fisherman um, who was uh, fishing for Lake Whitefish, but they caught this and I asked them to keep a, a burbot for me so that I could do this, uh, this exercise with you. So um, this is our fish here. So burbots, uh, you know, there you can, you can kind of get a look at the face. Um, a uh, general thing, kind of an interesting thing here, uh, cylindrical shape. So if you think of a lot of fish, you know, uh, fish have kind of the, uh, you know, they're sort of laterally compressed. Uh, if you think of a, a bluegill or a, a largemouth bass, uh, laterally compressed body. Uh, so they're kind of narrow. Burbot on the other hand is cylindrical. So uh, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing happening there. Um, you know, one of the things that we do as biologists, we'll look at, uh, you know, kind of the external morphology. That's an important thing to look at uh, with different fish. Uh, when I'm out in the field collecting fish, studying habitat, um, if I catch a fish that I've never seen before, I'm going to need to identify it. And uh, usually you'll start looking at a lot of the external morphology to try to identify it. So, you know, starting at the view that you have, we can start looking at uh, these fins. So you can, there's a, a fin here, um, if I tip it, tip it a bit. So you've got kind of a small fin on top and then there's a longer fin running along the back. And this is called the dorsal fin. And there's actually a pair of dorsal fins here. So we've got the short one and then the longer one. Um, if we look towards the back, you know, you've, you've got the tail or uh, what biologists would call this, this is the caudal fin. And uh, the burbot has kind of a rounded caudal fin. I think you can get a, a feel for that shape. It kind of hooks around. Um, and uh, if we move towards the front, we actually on the sides here, these are called the pelvic fins. Uh, so pelvic fins on the sides. And I like to think of those as kind of the arms. That's typically where they're at. Um, as we flip the fish over, and you know, this is a pretty diagnostic feature. This is something that we're not going to see in a lot of fish. These are the pelvic fins. And what's interesting here, the pelvic fins are farther towards the head uh, than the pectoral fins are. So I like to think of the pelvic fins as kind of the legs on the fish. And typically, uh, most fish, if we're looking at a bass, a bluegill, uh, a muskie, 
we'd see those pelvic fins uh, much farther back on the body. But as a, a, a feature that we see in the cod family, these pelvic fins are very far up. And, uh, you know, if you kind of look at the, the bottom of the fish as well, there's definitely a difference in coloration here. Uh, we've got kind of a lighter belly, a very dark and mottled coloration on the back and the top of the fish. And, uh, you know, there's, there's sort of a, a darker brown, a lighter brown uh, coloration here. And these are all sort of adaptations for the burbot uh, to uh, hide where it lives. And so uh, burbot are what we call benthic species. So they are uh, fish that live on the bottom. Benthic means the bottom part of the lake, the deep part of the lake. And, you know, you can imagine, I think, you know, it's maybe hard to see some of the detail, but you can definitely get the, the picture that this is a fairly dark colored fish. And, you know, imagine you're living down on the bottom of the lake. Um, other fish aren't gonna see you uh, if they're sort of swimming along over top of you. So, you know, that is uh, one of the, the things that a, a burbot does. It's living on the bottom, it's feeding near the bottom, and it's really blending in very well. We can see that with the coloration. Um, so we, we've looked at all the, the fins, and uh, kind of the last fin to think about is called the anal fin, and that runs uh, basically from the vent, that's where the poop comes out. Uh, the anal fin runs all the way down, and on, on this fish species, fairly long anal fin runs all the way back to the caudal fin here. So, you know, some fish species have very small anal fins, some have very long anal fins. So, you know, different kind of factors that we see um, as we look at different species. Uh, another really important feature. So, you know, one of the features as a, a biologist that I would look at are the barbels. And um, basically what we're looking at here is it's a whisker. Um, a barbel is a, sort of a structure that hangs off usually the face of the fish that they can use to uh, mostly feel their environment, maybe help find food. And, you know, another one of these diagnostic features we look, like, look at is a single barbel. So there is this single barbel, like a single whisker, uh, right off the middle of the chin on the burbot. And that is the only, uh, the only single barbel species that we would see in the Great Lakes or in the upper Midwest. So we know, uh, you know, looking at these, uh, knowing where this fish came from, looking at, you know, the placement of the pectoral fins, a single barbel here on the chin, we would say, okay, we've got a burbot in front of us, uh, scientific name, Lotta Lotta. Um, so, you know, that is a, a lot of the stuff we could look at here. Uh, we also want to think about, um, you know, uh, burbot are a, ver a visual predator. They have uh, kind of their eyes right in the front, uh, and they are going to use that, that barbel. They're going to hide out on the bottom, camouflage, and they're going to use those eyes as well to find their prey. Uh, and that prey will be near the bottom of the lake. Uh, they also live in rivers. Um, and, you know, I think important things to think about there, uh, you know, the, the way that they uh, interact in their, their environments. Uh, the type of food is important too. I think when we cut the fish open, we're gonna probably get to see some of the things that this uh, burbot had eaten. Uh, generally, uh, when burbots start out small, they, they eat a lot of invertebrates, so small things, maybe insect larva, uh, larger things like possum shrimp. Um, and, and as they grow, they shift more and more to eating, on fi eating fish, uh, so small fish. And a burbot this size, which I just weighed, four pounds, 13 ounces, uh, this burbot would definitely be a, a fish eater. So as they get uh, to be, you know, fully adult size, and this is a sexually mature burbot um, that's going to be feeding entirely on fish. So that's that's what they 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 feed on. Uh, another another uh, thing I'd like to point out, just the the lateral line that runs along the sides. So that's another uh, factor that we would, or another thing we would look at. And what the lateral line is is a, a line of specialized cells that the, the fish can actually use. Lots of fish, most fish have lateral lines. Uh, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. Uh, on the burbot, you know, fairly long. Um, what the lateral line does is it actually can detect uh, movements in the water. So small vibrations in the water, which might be off in a you know, far distance, uh, they, they can detect that. And, you know, it's almost like the uh, kind of a superpower where they can, you know, detect things from far away. 
um, important to think think about, um, you know, another way that they can find prey or detect predators. Uh, and then our, uh, also our fairly small scales, uh, another thing that we have here. Um, you know, looking at the, the burbot, I've got a better view of it. You know, you could almost imagine that it doesn't have scales like a catfish, but it does actually have scales. They're just really small. So uh, Joe, are there any questions that have come in that I can answer? There are. I start exactly. cutting? You've actually answered several of them. Um, one was, is this a full-size fish? Absolutely. This is, you know, this is an adult. Uh, we should be able to figure out the gender when we open it up. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, you know, prob I don't know how old it is, but, you know, a fish this size, this is definitely a, a good size burbot. And is it burbot, B-U-R-B-O-T? B-U-R-B-O-T. That's okay. right. Okay. Now that was another question, and somebody had already asked about that red spot, but I think you you covered that. Um, the only other thing is I think they may have missed where it was caught. Sure. Yeah. So this is uh, this is from Lake Michigan. It was caught in a commercial fishing net. Uh, they were actually fishing for a different species. Uh, you know, in the Great Lakes, we do have commercial harvest of different species. The burbot is usually caught kind of incidentally. It's not targeted. Uh, but there are places, if you go out to Washington Island at the end of Door County in Wisconsin, uh, there, are, there is a place where they catch a lot of burbot and they actually market them. So, you know, some of the interesting other common names, this burbot is the sort of accepted common name for this fish. But in other places, they're also known as lawyers, as eel poot. If you go to Minnesota, uh, they have a big eel poot uh, festival. Uh, Cusk is another name. So, uh, you know, lots of different names there, you know, pretty, uh, you know, this, this kind of shape, uh, this is kind of what they do when you, if you pick one up, they kind of curl up a bit. Um, and, you know, this one's been in my freezer for quite a while and it froze like that, but, you know, they are pretty, uh, they, they move around a lot. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up, uh, make an incision along the belly here, and we're going to open this up and see what, what's going on inside. Um, you know, some of the other the other features I didn't really point out, but you know, definitely important to think about. Uh, we've got the operculum here, and you know, behind the operculum, I think you can see some reddish coloration back there, and that is, of course, the gills. Um, you know, the gills are very red, uh, and that's because there's a lot of small uh, capillaries, a lot of blood flowing through that gill area, and that's where that oxygen. Uh, you know, we breathe air but the burbots will, uh, and really fish in general, uh, you know, run water across their gills. And then because of that fine, uh, all that blood flow in the gill areas, uh, they can actually, uh, you know, pick up oxygen out of the water. So, uh, you know, pretty interesting uh, biology there. Um, and I'm gonna actually cut a bit here. I'm gonna actually open this side up for you. So you can actually get a, a look at what's going on inside. So there we, we've got kind of a flap here. So, you know, very big light colored uh, organ right here. And that is the liver. Um, I was doing a little research uh, earlier, reading one of the fish books, a uh, fish identification book. And uh, apparently back in the, I think the, the 20s, 1920s, now that we're in 2020, I have to specify 1920, but, uh, you know, you may have heard of cod liver oil as a, a product, and so that's the, the oil from a, the liver of a cod. Uh, you know, it's sort of a health food supplement people take. It's a, a good, healthy part of your diet. And, but, uh, and that's from the Atlantic cod out in the ocean or maybe the Pacific cods. Lots of cod in the world, but they're all out in salt water. This is our only freshwater example. And uh, some people back in the 1920s actually looked at the oil content and found that, you know, these were actually pretty high in oil. Um, and, you know, potentially hasn't happened yet, but uh, it is something that we could uh, turn into a product. Um, so other things that we have here, so I'm kind of moving the, uh, moving the liver out of the way. So kind of multiple lobes of the liver here. Uh, We've got this uh, thing, it looks like almost worms on it, but that is actually the uh, part of the stomach. And what we're looking at here is the stomach. You've got the esophagus coming down. So the mouth is up here. Esophagus runs into the main part of the stomach. Uh, and then uh, that's where, you know, when we're looking at diet, so fish diet is an important thing that we like to study as biologists. We wanna know what the fish are eating. We would actually cut the stomach here 
And here, and this is the, the portion, this kind of front portion of the stomach where we're more likely to find larger chunks of, of what it's eaten. So, uh, you know, a lot of times you can actually pull the stomach contents out of a fish and you will see, oh, hey, you know, they were eating round gobies or they were eating uh, bloater chubs. Uh, farther back, so these kind of fingery worm parts, that's, uh, you know, a lot of surface area here. And this is where a lot of that nutrition from the food they eat uh, is absorbed. So these are almost like hollow tubes. And that's where, you know, the, the food gets digested in the front part of the stomach, absorbed here. Uh, and then we kind of move back through. Um, and the, the burbot actually has a fairly long, uh, fairly long intestine here and leading of course to the vent. Uh, that's where the poop comes out. And that's uh, here in the back. Uh, so in terms of gender, we can actually tell uh, these are the ovaries right here. And so this was a female, um, uh, a female burbot. And uh, they're fairly small now, but as we get closer to the spawning season and, and another sort of interesting fact about the burbot is they're really one of the few species that we have in the Midwest and Wisconsin that will spawn in the winter months. Uh, most fish are gonna spawn in the spring, maybe into summer, uh, but the burbot will, uh, you know, most of their spawning is happening in, in February and March. Uh, so in, in some lakes, that's gonna be under the, under the ice. They're actually spawning under the ice. Uh, their, their eggs are gonna sit on the bottom. Those fertilized eggs sit there for maybe a month or two and then they can be one of the first to, uh, to hatch early in the spring and kind of get a jump start on those other species that might not spawn until May or June. Um, so, you know, this we can tell is a female because the ovaries are fairly big, but as we got closer to February, if we were looking at a fish caught in the winter, uh, those ovaries would fill most of this uh, abdominal cavity because, you know, especially the female fish, they're gonna invest a lot of resources in uh, producing either a large number of eggs or producing large eggs. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, yeah. We do have somebody asking if they, if does she have eggs now? Yeah, so, you know, these are, they're sort of uh, immature eggs right now. Um, you know, sort of the, the, the seed for an egg for the next year, but really, uh, you know, this, this burbot would need to, you know, feed and over the months, those eggs would, uh, you know, sort of grow much larger. So, you know, they are sort of here, but they need to develop and that takes uh, a lot of months, uh, months of effort. Um, it, we can kind of move up. We've got a, a gallbladder here. Uh, that's this, uh, you know, kind of, you know, I think because the, the liver is, is a very light color, but this gallbladder is pretty large right here. Um, uh, you can see some of the, uh, uh, actually, here's the kidney right here, this uh, dark patch um, kind of along the, uh, the intestines there. Um, you know, on the inside, you can see some of the, the veins and arteries. You can see sort of the back, the, the backside here of, uh, you know, there's some, some veins uh, going into the muscle and the abdominal cavity. Um, and, and, you know, as we move farther up into sort of this, uh, the cavity up here, that's where the, the heart is gonna be, the heart's uh, towards the, the front of the fish. Um, and that's, you know, that's mainly what we see on the inside of these fish. So uh, again, if you think about the, the organs that we have uh, as humans, we're, we're seeing a lot of the same things. The placement might be a little different, the shape might be different. And, you know, the, the digestive tract of these, of these fish uh, is going to vary depending on the types of food they eat. So, you know, when we look at some fish that have uh, very long intestines, they might be more of a, a species that eats plants. Uh, but generally, predators have a, a much shorter digestive tract. They're, you know, eating eating fish. They're eating things like that and moving that through pretty quickly. So, do we have any other? Yeah, they actually you... wanted to be able to see the heart. It does seem like this is a lot of. A lot of our attendees, this is their first um, dissection. So oh, they're excellent. a little bit queasy, but they're going, but they say it's super cool. Um, but they would like to see the heart. Okay, let's, uh, let's dig around. So I did take, this is the, uh, the stomach. I'm gonna let that warm up a little bit. And, you know, I think right at the end, we've got a little time left. We're going to open that up. So, yeah, let's see what we can try to get into here. 
And do the burbots have predators themselves? Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, when we look at the predators of different fish, uh, you know, this size burbot, probably not a lot of predators. Um, you know, this one is living in one to 200 feet of water in Lake Michigan. Uh, you know, only the largest lake trout uh, would feed on a fish this size. But, uh, you know, when we talk predators of fish, it's usually good to think about their whole life history. So, you know, from the egg stage, when there are those eggs uh, sitting on the bottom in, in late winter, uh, you know, there might be some fish out there that would feed on those eggs uh, when they hatch and they're very small. Uh, again, they could be potential, uh, potential food for, you know, smaller fish or uh, crustaceans like crayfish will feed on those small ones um, as they grow. So in the, the first year, they might be a couple inches long um, and burba is going to be food for larger fish, uh, birds as well, potentially. Um, you know, and, and even a, a burbot in Lake Michigan might spend some time closer to shore uh, early on in that sort of first year when it's growing, it might be in shallower water. So uh, at sort of a higher risk to, to being fed on. And, and I did cut into here and let's see, um, let's see how well we can get, I just uh, got some juices on my computer, but that's okay. So uh, yeah, right here, uh, there's a, there's the, the heart. It's a, you know, kind of this reddish organ right in, right in front, separated by a membrane between the, the abdominal cavity and the uh, cardiac cavity right there. Um, yeah, so looking, uh, you know, fairly small. Um, and we can actually, let's see if we maybe cut these, cut the liver out, remove that. Set, a, set some of these organs out. We can get a, a feel for, you know, there's that esophagus running back to that part of the stomach that I've removed. Um, more there. It's kind of hard to get at the, the heart anymore. And it's still a bit icy in here. Oh, yeah, I just got a face full of juice, but um, that is a risk uh, when you're dissecting fish. So yeah, hopefully you get a, a feel for the, what the stuff or the heart looks like right there. Yeah, and the heart, you know, just like in our body, pumping the blood through the, you know, through the whole body of the fish um, and, you know, pumping it past those, uh, past those gills. Um, and, you know, the heart is right next to the gills. The gills are right here. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to open the stomach up and see if we have anything in here. So this is always interesting to see, um, you know, and, you know, with, if you're doing a, a study on something, oh, look at that. All right. So I actually have a, it's kind of a greenish pebble. Um, so, you know, some evidence that burbot live near the bottom and feed on things near the bottom actually ate this pebble. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and what we do have, I'm seeing pieces of fish. So definitely a predator on fish that we've got a special term for that. We call those piscivores. Um, so if you're a fish that eats other fish, you're a piscivore. And, oh, great news. Okay. So a lot of times we open fish stomachs up, they can be empty. Some studies you might have 60% of your stomachs might be totally empty. And that is just the way things go. Uh, with a, a more generalist feeder like this burba, you know, they're gonna, they're opportunistic, they're gonna eat fish, but they're gonna eat other things as well. But what we do have here is, if you can see that, this is actually a little round goby. And, uh, you know, this is the, the kind of, you know, it's sort of slightly decomposed, but because of the body shape, some of the markings. Um, we can actually positively identify this species. And that's really useful, uh, you know, in a, in, if you're doing something like a diet study and you can actually identify the types of fish, uh, you know, it's important to know they eat fish, but what we wanna know is which fish species are they eating? And, uh, you know, there we've got another, this is kind of another view of, you know, this is maybe more, more difficult to identify. It's a little more uh, decomposed and it's, you know, I, I probably wouldn't uh, be able to make a positive identification here. 
So, you know, another, another thing we'll see with diet studies is quite a few uh, identif unidentified species. And so, you know, as far as scientists go, uh, things like using DNA to identify these species is being used more and more in fish biology and fish science. So you can actually, uh, you know, instead of kind of guessing or looking at things like, you know, vertebrae or bones um, to make an identification, you can actually pull some tissue out of these uh, and then identify that. So, you know, I, there's just lots of interesting things happening um, in the, you know, the field of biology and, you know, for me, I'm a fishery specialist, so I work with fish all the time. Um, and there's lots of interesting information that we can gain from a, a fish like this. Uh, we can learn about the biology, about the ecology, where they live, uh, what they do when they're there, um, you know, lots of different things. Uh, so just, uh, you know, lots of exciting, exciting stuff happening. Good question. Is, it seems like a lot of people have done fishing in, in the area with their families. So I think it's the first time that they've, you know, really seen the inside of the fish. And they're asking, can, do you, can you eat this fish? Yeah, so this fish, I mean, I am probably not gonna eat this, this individual fish, but, you know, definitely uh, there is sort of a, a limited market. You know, the commercial fishermen that I work with, when they catch these, you know, they don't really have a market for them. They're actually taking them home and eating them themselves. So. Uh, you know, the burbot, just like a cod, uh, you know, if you've had a, a cod fish fry before, I have, you know, deep fried the, the burbot meat before, it's delicious. Uh, you can actually boil it and it's called poor man's lobster. So, you know, very kind of light colored, flaky flesh. Uh, you can boil it for a bit until it's cooked, dip it in butter, it's delicious. So, uh, you know, you're not gonna find burbot in your local grocery store. But if you're up on Washington Island, you can, uh, you know, look for it there. I know up in uh, the Bayfield area of Wisconsin, you can go to some of those fish shops and they, they will have it in the freezer or they may have it available too. Um, if you live in an area with a Great Lakes commercial fishery that's active in fishing, you can go and ask them and say, hey, I'd, I'd really like to try a burbot. Uh, they'll probably call it a lawyer. Uh, so you can tell them, hey, could you save me when you're one of those lawyers when you're out? I'd like to, you know, buy that and, and eat it. And really the, you know, kind of the, the part you want to eat, there's sort of these almost, uh, you know, heavy kind of muscle along the spine here. And you get kind of a circular, nice piece of meat that would run, you know, right along the back and tasty stuff. Well, I know we only have a couple more minutes, but some people were asking about the brain too. Yeah, so the brain, I mean, they've, I think, you know, I don't know, you probably can't hear this. I could actually put my microphone. So, you know, a fairly thick skull, the brain is here. Uh, not a huge brain, it's a lot harder to get into um, than, you know, well, you know, we've got thick skulls and, and fish have thick skulls too. Uh, you know, if we were cutting it open, we've got the eyes up here. There's actually uh, the ear bones. So fish do have ear bones, they're called otoliths. And that's another, uh, something that we use in bi fish biology. Uh, we can actually take the, the otoliths out, the ear bones, which are right behind the brain. And you can actually uh, make these fine sections of them and actually read them like tree rings. Um, every year the fish is alive, they'll lay on a ring to that otolith. It's like a little circle. And we can actually age fish. That's one of the, the best ways to age a fish is to, you know, cut those otoliths out and then age it like a tree. Um, and that, you know, lots of interesting, we could find out exactly how old this fish is and that'd be pretty interesting. Very, very cool. And I think somebody may have jumped in. You had talked about their coloring at the very beginning, but they were asking if that is kind of a camouflage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, they're, they're living on the bottom of the lake uh, or the bottom of a river and this is, you know, definitely a coloration. It's kind of this mottled light, light brown, uh, kind of a greenish, dark green, olive color, color in the back. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, not trying to advertise themselves that they're there. They're, you know, they're not going to move a lot. They're kind of ambush predators as well. So they're going to sit on the bottom, wait for some food to come, and they're going to eat it when it's, when it's there. That is super cool, Titus. Well, unfortunately, we're at the end of our time. If I am correct, it is one o'clock. Um, yes, 
So I want to thank everybody for joining us and especially thank you to Titus for this amazing field trip. I've had uh, several people say just how cool this is and thank you so much for sharing this virtually. Um, a recording of this field trip is going to uh, hopefully be available and so we can follow up with the teachers out there and um, it will be posted on our website at wisconsinsciencefest.org for people to watch if you want to watch it again. So with that, um, remember that the Wisconsin Science Festival continues with events hosted from organizations across the state that you can participate in. Again, at wisconsinsciencefest.org for more science fun. And Titus, I just can't thank you enough. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you. Take care, everybody.